Put in its simplest form, the definition of an ident is a short visual image employed by the television programs that works as a logo to locate the viewer to the channel. In recent years, the ident itself has become a form of conveying meaning. As well as advertising the channel, institutions now use idents as a method of delivering key messages and ideals to a targeted audience. Marketing professionals carefully construct a targeted audience. Working closely alongside a creative individuals, they will ensure that the content fittingly appeals to the audience that they have selected and promotes appropriate ideologies that fit into the channel's brand. While the viewing and exportation of media products are augmented, advertising your media text and institution became just as important as the content. Encouraging audiences to consume your media text became essential. The large variety of media texts made audiences feel overwhelmed and confused as to what they should consume. The most effective method of ensuring the audience will consume your product is by establishing a brand for yourself. Television institutions use idents as a method of establishing a brand. Before audiences had the option to pick and choose between what channel would satisfy their mood, people were forced to watch what was available to them without choice or option or what time they were going to watch their programme. In fact, it wasn't until the 1990s when audiences had the ability to choose between a significant amount of channels. The first channel to broadcast television live to the British public was the BBC in 1939. The channel had limited time slots and only broadcasted sh television shows for a set amount of hours each day. Being the only public service broadcasting channel in the UK meant that it had a captivated audience, meaning if people of that time had the privilege to watch television at home, they were forced to watch the BBC. This, wor this worked as an advantage to the BBC, as they didn't need to worry about c competing against other channels and didn't need to spend money spend vast amounts of money on advertising, which included idents. The BBC was taken off the air in 1939 due to the outbreak of war. It didn't return until 1946. Whilst making their transition back onto UK television, it became apparent to the BBC that competing media institutions were beginning to catch up on the national media rat race. This was in the form of commercial television. In 1953, the BBC came up with a marketing strategy that would allow them to imprint their brand into the British public's brain, so that before the inevitable outbreak of commercial television, they could raise some kind of awareness of their brand. They created an ident. The ident became known as the bat wings due to its similarity to the animal. The ident was simple. It was in black and white and had a spherical object in the middle. In 1954, ITV was introduced. 54, ITV was introduced to, onto the British public television schedule. It was decided that ITV should be operated by commercial lines, that was regulated by a public body. They thought that instead of being owned by a singular network, it should be organised by a chain of independent franchises that were geographically are positioned all over the nation. Because ITV was positioned all over the nation, there wasn't one singular ident for the ITV brand. However, each ITV franchise had a different ident, and the typology of the ident was dependent on the location and programming type of the franchise. Towards the end of the 1950s, the number of households that had television sets had exceeded the amount of households that had radios rising to over 10 million by the end of the 1960s. During the beginning of the 1960s, BBC had already effectively established their brand as the nation's public broadcaster. They were aware that their current Batwings item wasn't effectively representing their channel and the key values of the programmes that they broadcasted. It did not represent various key events that had happened around the world in the 1960s and the black and white almost scientific appearing design of the ident negatively affected the brand by making them appear outdated. After numerous board meetings with marketing professionals, they created an ident that reflects their channel and the decade appropriately, and became known as the Globe. 
the ident featured a spinning globe with the BBC's logo positioned in the middle. The ident was still in black and white, but the globe connoted international messages which perfectly represented the BBC's BBC One's mantra. The simple graphics and lack of other effects meant that the ident I don't could appeal to a broader demographic. In 1964, the Pilkington Committee on Broadcasting suggested that the third television channel on British television should go to the BBC. The BBC introduced BBC Two. The channel's first ident was an animation of two grey stripes flying in from the left and right, with the BBC logo and the number two coming in from the bottom and top. Similar to the BBC One's ident, it had the same style of logo and animation. The ident featured a more advanced form of editing for the time period, representing the exciting, fun type of programming BBC Two would broadcast in the 1960s, also making the brand appear more up-to-date with global advancements in editing and technology. The music accompanying the ident was a fanfare based on the Morse code translation of BBC Two. The use of Morse code appealed to an older generation that have some kind of understanding of the deconstructing of the code. Anything related to Morse code and deconstructing secret languages is used as a method of making reference to the war. Considering the Second World War was still very much in the people's mind, the use of Morse code in the ident is used to make reference to the Second World War, allowing an older demographic that were directly involved in the war feel more appreciated and represented by the brand. Three years after the initial release of BBC Two, BBC decided to introduce colour to their television channel. Their previous ident was removed and replaced by a colour version. The ident showed three colours flying in from the corners and merging together to form a white dot in the middle, with a large number two in the middle, with the words and the words colour written underneath it. The ident was largely used as a marketing technique to demonstrate that the channel was now broadcasting in colour. However, however, the design of the ident was completely different to those that the BBC had previously used for any of their channels. The ident was used as a method of rebranding the channel. Considering the channel was trying to advertise the fact that they now broadcast in colour, the use of colour in the ident was understated. Initially, this was because technologies regarding colour of that time were limited, but also that because the introduction of coloured te television sets was new, and they were quite expensive, so the use of simple colours would leave an audience that was less financially able to afford a coloured te television set or licence unrepresented. And because the BBC was a public broadcaster, they had to ensure that their channel demographics were as broad as possible. Towards the end of the 1960s, television licences had increased to 60 million and television was being blamed for the plummeting ci cinema ticket sales. The public service philosophies were beginning to become ingrained into a lot of the BBC's programmes. In 1974, BBC One began broadcasting colour. They brought out a new colour ident as well. The ident showed a moving globe in colour with the BBC One's logo in the bottom. Like all of BBC, BBC One's previous used idents, it had a very international feel to it, which is common, a common theme used by the BBC to make them appear more culturally aware. The ident also had the word colour in bold writing next to the logo. This was used as a method of encouraging viewers still watching in black and white to purchase a coloured te television set. In 1983, it was announced by the Anon Committee that a fourth channel will be introduced. The channel was awarded to another commercial independent body. The channel became known as Channel 4. Other channels that had been around for more than 20 years and already had a set in stone target audience that understood their philosophies and values. Channel 4 had the ability to establish their brand with a more up-to-date, media-savvy audience. The channel's first ident used several different rectangular colour blocks flying in from the corners to form a number four. The style of editing and shop typology appeared very cutting edge and sophisticated. 
The use of colour in the ident was exaggerated. This was because most of the British public were now watching their television on a colour television set, as the price of them had dropped significantly. And by suiting the ident to fit a small minority of the population that still couldn't afford colour television sets would have worked to the disadvantage because it would have made their channel appear less technologically advanced. The introduction of more television channels meant that broadcasters could be a bit more inclusive with their channel demographics. In the beginning, it became apparent that Channel 4 promoted middle class ideals, not only by appealing to a richer audience demographic by using colour, but the nature of their programmes promoted popular values that replicated the beliefs of the middle class in the 1980s. Their first item was a classic example of this. The graphics were a lot more sophisticated and the colours have connotations of wealth and vitality. After BBC Two bro broadcasted their computer-generated item, there was a surge in the amount of channels that began using computer-generated designs. BBC One computer-generated a globe that spun around. ITV and Channel 4 used their logo, but computer-generated it to improve the graphic design and effects. The 1990s saw the first successful attempt at satellite television. At this time, the regulation of British television became less strict, and most broadcasters had almost complete control of their channel. With the introduction of satellite TV, it meant that there was an influx in the amount of channels with their own individual idents. The majority of them used computer-generated design, some of which were more visually advanced than anyone had ever seen before. Some channels became more creative with the idents, using real-life footage as well as computer-generated graphics. Towards the end of the 1990s and the beginning of the 2000s, there was a re revolution in television idents. At this point, there were hundreds of television channels available to the British public. Currently, idents can almost perfectly replicate the type of programming a channel will broadcast, and uh, active audience, audiences are able to pick up on these themes and decide if they would appreciate them or not. MTV UK is an American-based cable and satellite television channel owned by MTV Networks and Logo Group, a unit of the Viacom Media Networks division of Viacom. In its early years, the main demographic of MTV was young adults, but today it primarily, primarily targets adolescents. MTV UK values and philosophies are based around youth culture. They want to ensure that the, they brand themselves as the youth's broadcaster. MTV UK exaggerates American values to allow the moments of escapism from British culture. MTV first started popular youth culture of that time, the 1990s, was based around anti-establishment, so they made sure that their programmes and idents replicated these beliefs and values. In recent years, youth culture has shifted to more stereotypical popular culture, such as ideologies based around money, love and popularity. Some of these ideologies based around anti-establishment still re remain but promoted more transparently than before. MTV is com a commercially led institution that produces mass media texts. Every media text distributed by the MTV is closely analysed and assessed to ensure that it appeals to a particular demographic. Virtually all of the media texts MTV broadcasts are created with an initial target audience in mind. They will construct themes and ideologies and values that will stereotypically attract this audience and then will apply them within the text. Commercial institutions like MTV have to make money to survive. The way in way MTV makes money is through advertisement and the amount of money they get from advertisement is dependent on the annual number of people that watch MTV. Apart from creating high quality media text, the main way MTV attracts high viewer ratings is by creating idents that attract, to, that attract their ideal demographic. MTV will create several idents that will attract several different niche social stereotypes that appeal to the overall ideal demographic. And because MTV aims to attract both genders, 
Half the idents will be aimed towards teenage boys and half to teenage girls. Idents MTV users are placed before a specific television show with a voiceover introducing the show that's about to come on. These idents will often feature themes that are similar to the show. For example, an ident before a show aimed at teenage girls, like My Sweet Sixteen, may include messages and objects that are stereotypically associated with females. This works as a method of showing the audience a very brief snippet of what the show is about. The audience can then decide if they would like to watch the show. MTV UK's idents are shown throughout the whole day. They will be played before, after and even during an advertisement break. These types of idents are dependent on the time of day and the programming that was on before the advertisement break. For example, an older youth generation may be watching MTV during the night, so MTV will broadcast an ident that communicates messages that an older youth to young adults demographic will appreciate and understand. Globalisation of television was unavoidable, as the majority of people working in producing roles were regularly circulated round from country to country, and each time they worked on a new project, they would inevitably include themes from their own culture. However, the introduction of companies like MTV on British television supplied a direct, direct link for globalisation in media. MTV was first launched on British television. A lot of consideration went into deciding how MTV could incorporate values in British culture into MTV's brand and how people could relate to some of the themes being conveyed in their shows. Despite all of their planning, it was impossible to make an American brand British. They accepted this and used it to their advantage by promoting their culture as something new, exciting and a method of escapism to the youth. In 2007, MTV went, underwent a complete rebranding. They released several new idents which were used to replicate youth culture of the time. These idents were known as identity reboots. They all feature the same kind of colour schemes and type of mellow music. They use ideologies from popular youth culture to appeal to teenage boys and girls. This identity reboot features a large amount of visual imagery of objects and locations to stimulate the senses. It shows a chocolate substance dripping down from the sky onto gold-coated objects, whilst a slow music plays in the background. There are several golden coated objects floating from the sky while a melted chocolate, chocolate substance pours over them. There is a diamond ring, horse, Bentley, sunglasses and lipstick. When put into this context they have connotations of power, money, wealth, beauty, vanity, lust, desire and self-obsession. All of these connotations could stereotypically be linked to youth culture, meaning the target demographic of this island is teenage girls, approximately 14 to 18, from a working class to middle class background. Also, the golden coated objects look undeniably like a charms of a Pandora bracelet, which is an expensive bracelet that can be linked to female youth culture. Throughout the island, it becomes apparent that MTV are making reference to sex. The melted chocolate substance pouring over the top of the object, objects has connotations of power and money, as well as the chocolate having connotations of lust. Together this creates some kind of consumerist sexual fantasy. At one point the substance goes through a round ring and then explodes on a Bentley, with which a metaphor which is a metaphor for the viewers for power and lust of money. Alongside the mellow music, location and slow pace editing, it makes reference to sex. At several points in the island there are phallic symbols included. There is a lipstick and aeroplane. And the gloopy substance lands on top of them and erupts like a volcano. If you closely analyse the other identity reboots, it becomes apparent that they are all making reference to sex. MTV tends to use sexual reference in a lot of the advertisement, some subtler than others. However, it's an effective method of appealing to the younger sexually suppressed youth, as they're able to subconsciously indulge in their sexual fantasies. There are several global influences in the ident. These have been weaved into the symbol 
symbolic meaning of several of the falling objects. The main global influence in the ident is the Big Mac. When McDonald's started distributing food in the UK, their brand prompted an influx of American culture that circulated around the UK. This is known as globalisation. However, it also meant that objects like the burger took on new connotations, consumerism and overindulgence in the UK. These ideologies are largely present in American culture. Also, as soon as we see the Big Mac, American culture and America instantly pops into our mind. Globalisation of American values worked to MTV's advantage, as by the time MTV started broadcasting internationally, it meant that people were more acceptive of American values, meaning a lot of the advertisements could be used globally because they didn't need to link to any other culture to them because people had already some kind of understanding of American values. This ident is an example of this. MTV were able to use this ident throughout the whole of Europe as it didn't make any clear link to location and is made to look surreal. The only themes that a passive audience would be able to pick up on are the American co connotations of the on objects, meaning there is no clear link to the specific culture apart from America. Overall, this advertisement is successful in targeting a relatively niche audience and replicating some of the main ideologies that MTV promotes, including consumerism, desire, money and power. However, some of the messages are transparent to a less sophisticated media audience, which will make the piece a bit more niche to those that can understand the negotiated reading of the text. MTV, the Discovery Channel, is an American company operated by Discovery Networks, Western Europe, they produced an English-speaking channel that targets the United Kingdom and Ireland. The channel's programming is based on programming produced by Discovery Networks Europe. The channel produces documentaries that are based around the inner workings of, for the, of the natural and man-made world. Unlike MTV, Discovery HD UK aimed to make their channel as British as possible. They conducted market research into what themes would be appreciated by the UK. However, a tiny bit of the UK, however, a tiny bit of American values would have inevitably been transferred into British television during their transition. Discovery HD released several idents in 2009 as an effort of rebranding the channel. All of the idents were based around the main themes that the channel promoted in their programs. Each ident was niche to one audience demographic that was part of the institution's overall target demographic. The idents are based around the inner workings of mundane, everyday objects and animals that we pay no attention to but when analysed are relatively interesting. The hedgehog ident is a 15 seconds long. It features a hedgehog making a nest with the camera focusing on the objects within the nest with the hedgehog. In the background, there is a noise of what seems to be children laughing and playing. Similar to MTV, the ident uses cinematography as a method of stimulating the senses, trying to make it feel as if you can feel the roughness and softness of some of the objects. The camera focuses on the spikes of, on the hedgehog's back, intertwining with each other, creating some kind of visual imagery that alongside the colour scheme and soundtrack has connotations of mourning and typical Britishness. The shots of the mud are used to create connotations of nature, which is a theme that is conveyed throughout the whole of the item, and is one of the themes that Discovery HD like to associate their brand with. The item attracts an older demographic, as the shot pace and transition between the shots are very smooth and look relatively effortless. The targeted audience would be between 40, 30 to 40 year old middle class males. There are no global influences in the ident and the colour scheme and the cinematography would suggest that the location is Britain as it abides by the typical British countryside documentary codes and conventions. Majority of the shots of the are extreme close ups of the hedgehog showing its natural habitat and at some points the shots get uncomfortably close 
However, this is used as a method of demonstrating how the Discovery Channel misses no detail when whilst producing documentaries. The main reason why they chose a hedgehog in the ident is because the hedgehog, stereotypically, is a mundane object that we often see and hear of but don't really show much interest in, into because we are used to them in the UK. And one of the Discovery's main ma new mantra is, is that they allow insight into ordinary objects that we don't know much about. Altogether, the ident is relatively successful in attracting the ideal demographic. <clears throat> However, in my personal opinion, the target audience of this text is too exclusive and eliminates a large majority of the people that would usually consume Discovery HD. Regardless, the visual imagery used is effective and a large majority of the themes in the ident represent the Discovery HD's brand.